Thank you for visiting the Duffy Creative YouTube channel. Uh, here's another video on adjusting white balance easily and pretty accurately in Photoshop CC 2018. So this will work on pretty much any image format that Photoshop opens, but I've got a JPEG that's pretty much straight out of the camera. And the general idea with this was the camera wasn't set up to compensate for fluorescent lights, hence the very yellowish tone that's across the um, whole thing, despite the fact there's actually a lot of yellow in it too. But um, so this is going to show how to adjust the white balance for this. So this is how I've got my window set up right now in Photoshop. Yours might look differently, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. I'll show you how to get uh, the controls you need. So up at window at the top, uh, regardless of whether you have it on your screen or not, all the things that have check boxes are things that are on your screen as you see it right now. Um, if it doesn't have a check box, you're probably not going to see it as an active control. Uh, I happen to have adjustments as a tab that I can click on, but everything is always going to be under this window thing as well. So if I find it under adjustments, bam, it shows up right here. So uh, I've got my one single locked layer, which is typically what happens when you open up a JPEG initially. Um, and I've got all the different adjustments and stuff. Uh, so you want to go to the one that says levels. It looks like a, basically a, like an equalizer audio graph kind of thing, but uh, click on it. And it defaults to RGB. It's showing you the color spectrum for all of the colors combined. And uh, that's not what we necessarily want to look at initially. Um, but if you click on the little pull down for this, you see red, green, and blue. Um, we're going to look at all three of these, and we're going to do them in order from red, then green, and blue. So if I start on red, uh, basically you see a graph that represents all the red that's in that picture. And the whole idea is um, adjusting the tops and the bottoms to get rid of any gaps where there's like nothing and or if it's at the very edge and there's like a really tiny spike I try to cut that out so uh, on the black end of the spectrum I'm going to move it up till we start to actually see some color so move it to right there and I'm going to pull it down just one or two uh, clicks so it kind of goes in from where that spike is so uh, red usually is a pretty wide spectrum that shows up in almost every image but not always so that was red. Now we got a green. And you see there's a lot of color missing from the top. And uh, we're going to actually move it in to get rid of a lot of the empty uh, color that's at the top. And you'll see the color on the screen uh, kind of adjust for that. And I might go ahead and just move the black side of it up just a little bit, but not really too much. So now I've got just active color between those two versus empty space. And then finally, we get on to blue. And this is where you usually see the biggest gap for fluorescent lighting, where there's a lot of space that's missing. Uh, so I'm going to pull this in just a little bit for a little spike at the end on the black side. And I actually pull this further in than just where the color starts, because uh, it, it just makes a pretty big difference for getting back to your pure light. And this may not seem as perfectly accurate because you're doing this kind of visual, but you pretty much just stop where you get to the purest whites and blacks and stuff. So, and I've got like white PVC and I've got black corners and stuff that give me pretty good definitive visuals, but not every image is as easy as this one. But um, that's it. Uh, you can go back to RGB and this looks a little bit different now because it's a different mashup of all your colors, but you're not really worried about that. But uh, pretty much to see the difference, uh, so you've got your adjustment layer that has all of the colors that you just uh, adjusted. If you click on the little eyeball to uh, make it invisible instead of uh, being shown, uh, you see all your adjustments that went away. And then you show that layer and instantly it's white and vivid and uh, I mean, it's good color now. So uh, the next thing, if you want to keep it as a JPEG, 
is you would go up to layer and you could flatten image and that combines the adjustment layer into the JPEG and you can save it. Otherwise, if you save it with layers, it would have to be saved as like a TIFF or a Photoshop file. So um, that's pretty much the end of this lesson. Uh, if you liked it, um, click the like button below, uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you want to see some different kind of tutorials, just mention them in the comments and I can work on making some. Um, so, till next time.